button. Okay, here we go. Okay, here awesome. We go. Um, uh, why can I hear myself? I swear my computer does really crazy stuff. And it's just my computer. Kelly doesn't do this. Maybe I'm hearing myself through one of y'all's things. Mute. Mute. Is that better? Yes. Aha, cool. Somebody had me on speaker or something, I guess. Hey, how are my leaders? It's good to see everybody and or hear people. We haven't done this in a while. And uh, it's been cool to like watch you guys from afar a little bit. But uh, I thought this was, this was really, uh, I'm glad that Kelly's taking the reins and scheduling things at least once a month. I think that's really vital that we touch base, especially as leadership. Um, not only, oh cool, John's on here is now. Um, not only, so all we're missing, I think, is Tulin and Kobe. Um, so I think it's vital that we, that, we, that we touch base here, not only to learn from each other what's going well, what's frustrating, um, and we'll touch on both here. Uh, but what I want one thing I want to give kudos to so many of you is just since really since New Orleans, man, I've seen more and more of you take leadership within your own teams. And, um, it's really this, this delicate balancing act, right. Of offering all the, all the support and the tools and stuff that the crew gives, but also not, um, just relying solely on the crew as a whole, to do your job for you, right? And um, I really noticed, oh, Mary's here too, awesome. Um, so I really, really noticed, and, and, and I apologize if I haven't got to each of you individually and say, hey, man, I just really noticed that your leadership is stepping up, that your people are, even if they're in the crew, they're, they're coming to you first, uh, that you're really establishing those relationships and really getting in the trenches with your people. Um, for me personally, that's been a refocus this year and that wouldn't be possible for me to get in the trenches with my new PS coaches if you guys weren't stepping up and doing the same. And I think everybody's been, everybody's business is benefiting from that because when I had to take a hard, hard look at my business and as Kelly and I sat down and looked at our goals and I looked at my, uh, my little report card thing that I got is one thing I noticed is that I really felt like I was abandoning my new PS coaches. I was just putting them in this gigantic cog that was the, the crew and treating them like I would any of y'all's coaches. And I, I was really convicted about that because I said, okay, these people chose to work with me. You know, and I look back at, you know, those of you that are my personally sponsored coaches in here that, you know, whether it's, you know, times I've been on the phone or texted back and forth with Wade or Christy or uh, Mary or, you know, any of you guys that are actually my PS coaches one of the reasons I feel you guys are in here is because there was that relationship established. And when I look at, okay, my real focus is who are the next group of leaders? And, and that wouldn't be possible for me to find the next group of leaders if I was having to babysit the current group of leaders. And I don't. And you guys have totally stepped up in, in that point. So now I feel like when I have conversations with you, um, it's, quick and to the point and I'm talking to a peer and, and it's just my way of just saying kudos guys that I've really from last year to this year it, it's just night and day difference and I've just been really impressed uh, with how you guys have stepped up I think everybody in here really has seen this thing hey this is my business and I'm treating this as my business whether or not you're doing this full-time yet or not um, I, I know so many of you in here that that is your goal and and it's only and only until we treat it that way does that goal become a reality, right? Um, I love hearing more and more from you guys, you know, whether it's Christy sending me pictures of here's my work area, here are my goals, here are my work hours. I mean, that's big steps, right? Um, you know, watching John take leadership of his Rainmakers group and really creating a culture within a culture there, I think it's been really, really cool. Um, and then, and what's been so awesome is in the midst of you guys taking care of your own team, you're never too busy to, pop in and really that whole no coach left behind mantra we all have in the crew wall. Uh, I step in there. I'm like, okay, it's my turn to go answer questions. And I get there and half the time everything's taken care of because you guys are just Johnny on the spot and just um, such great leaders and, and servants of your time. So I think that's been uh, really awesome. So kudos to you guys. Take, uh, take some pride in that. I know it's real easy always to focus on what we, we haven't got yet and what we aren't to yet. And I think, 
that was the one reminder I had uh, on the coach call on Monday is when Jeff uh, Jeff um, Hill was um, kind of going over kind of reviewing my business with me. He's like, Hey, did you realize your business doubled from here to here and that you did this to this? And I'm like, you know, no. And he goes, do you realize, you know, I didn't realize I had an 80, there was an 80% retention rate in this, in this team with almost seven years. That's unheard of in a business like this normally. And that also is because, and it's not just on me. There's no way we have an 80% retention rate without you guys um, participating in that and taking ownership of that. So that leads me to what I want to focus on today. Because, and, I, and I've touched on this before. When I look and I've really spent some time, I went on that ski trip with, with Mike Ryan and Dave Ward and Josh Spencer, and I, I picked Josh's brain a lot. He has a really big team, uh, obviously former top coach. So uh, even though the kid's 27, 28 years old, it's not above me to shut up and listen, right? Because he's done things with his business I have not, and I, am, I will humble out quickly and, and chit-chat. And um, So what it shows me is that our retention rate and the people that have success in our team is the same, if not greater than any other team uh, in the network. As, as I talk around about, you know, I talk to Tommy and I talk to Barbie and I talk to these people of like how many people actually activate and how many people like, I really feel like our, our activation um, and retention rate is really high. The only thing we are missing to really create an amazing, you know, just take it to the next level is sheerly numbers guys is straight up numbers. And so that's been a big conviction on me this year and looking back and in the past, and I think I've shared with you guys before, um, is that I've been hesitant to lead with the business, right. Or lead with every, you know, it's, we, we got into this, we got into this world of, well, let's let everybody be a challenger first and not even bring up the business. And then, you know, in the process, we'll see if we can bring them along. And then sometimes we just, we lose them or they get in a challenge group and they, you know, they let themselves out. They, they disengage before we ever have that conversation with them. And what I'm reminded more and more of is I'm talking to coaches like Barbie, like Jason Diebold, like Josh Spencer is, is really we're doing a disservice if we don't lead with the entire um, opportunity. And think of it almost as a buffet table right? Somebody comes to you for health and fitness. I mean, I think of, I look at Jed on here and Jed would never be on here if I didn't, I led with the entire opportunity with him. And I didn't know Jed at all. We had no, we had a, we had a mutual friend, but he said, Hey, I'm coming in and he just wanted P90X. And had I just treated him as a challenger and Jed can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know that he has the results that he's had, that he stays with this this long that this isn't something that he just buys and sticks in the corner because all of a sudden he was, he was in a community more than just a weight loss program. Would you agree with that, Jed? Okay. I'll, um, hold on. I'll, I'll unmute you real quick here for a second. Oh, wait, that didn't work. So, so share a little bit of that. Cause obviously we didn't know each other and you were just like, Hey, I just want P90X. And I easily could have been like, here's my link, but we talked a little more than that. Yeah, I think absolutely. I, I honestly believe that I probably would never have finished P90X if I didn't have Tim as support and you as support, but also the crew and kind of that second level of accountability, um, you know, as the business and just that extra support. Have you, and I'm, you I'm hesitant right now with that because I have a challenger that she's going to be an awesome coach and I just have to get out of my own way and talk to her about coaching. Yeah. And what's so cool, Jed, is, is, and we all need to remember, is how powerful our story of getting involved is. And to constantly remind ourselves what our hesitations were and what our fears were. And what can we handle in that initial conversation that's really going to diffuse that before it ever comes up? You know, uh, I think that that's really big. I feel like if everybody on here doesn't have a, and, and I'm just as guilty, it's on my to-do list. I've been in this seven years, and I don't have a My Beach Body Coach story video. I don't. I'm sitting here, I'm talking to Shalene and Brett, and I'm talking about, you know, how do I streamline this recruiting thing? And, and she, he, you know, they're telling me, go look at, at Lauren Munchko and go look at Molly Richards. And they literally have the most simple I could do in my sleep video, just telling why they got involved and a couple slides about the business and why it makes sense to get in the business at the same time. 
The other video I'm going to make because it keeps coming up over and over again is why it makes sense to be a discount coach. And I'm going to bring, cause, cause I keep getting in these same conversations of, okay, well it's 16 bucks a month. And I'm trying to explain, yeah, but 16 plus the 25% off, it's still, and I'm like, why am I having this conversation with math involved 800 times when I could ask Kelly to, hey, do the math for me, make two slides, and let's make a video. And when some people are like, oh, I don't know. And, you know, just think about it. Th these are the objections you get most of the time. Trying to explain how they're still saving money, even with a $16 fee, what the time commitment is, because they all just assume there's more time involved when there really isn't, and, and whatever, like, and all of that could be handled in a five minute video sharing your personal story, how I got involved as a Team Beach Body coach, or however you want to phrase that. Um, there's no reason every person on, and that's, guess what your homework is out of here. Um, there's no reason everybody shouldn't have that. And I have the same homework. So don't think that it's just me going, you need to have homework, shake your finger. Um, because as soon as that video exists, recruiting numbers are going to go up, right? A, 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 immediately. The other thing is because I know just about everybody in here outside of maybe Jamil is, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that I think everybody else in here has, has really expressed a desire to do this full time, right? Uh, and if we're going to do this full time, then we need the numbers to back it up. And, you know, I, I was, you know, talking with Mike Ryan, I think Mike Ryan even mentioned this on our call is Mike Ryan's been picking Mindy Winder's brain a lot. And, and if you guys don't know, I think everybody here is familiar with Mindy. I love me some Mindy. Um, and I say this with all like love and respect for Mindy. There is nothing flashy about Mindy Winder. She's not one of these like knockout crazy hot chicks or ripped body chicks or she's just, Girl next door, mom at home, you know, um, she's just a girl. She's just a girl next door. And this chick's making 20 grand a week. I'm going to repeat that number. She's making 20 grand a week. And it's not because she has the best website. And it's not, I mean, you go look at her social media. She's just crazy freaking consistent. And what she told Mike Ryan and Mike's like, dude, she's like, she gave me some of my own medicine. You've got to put numbers on your side. She never has a month where she brings in less than five coaches a month. She puts the business in front of three to five people a week. And I really don't, and I know that I haven't been doing that to this point. So knowing that, okay, if the only thing that's standing between me and having a really big team, and this goes for all of you as well, you know, whether it's team crew as a whole or your personal team that you sponsor and grow is numbers. It's specifically when I see people like, I don't, you know, if you guys have watched um, what like Morgan K is doing right now, one of Kobe's coaches, what my new coach Jessica Metzger is doing. That's just ridiculous. Six days as a coach and she's signed up five people and it's like success club 28 and she hadn't been a coach a week. Um, what it just reminds me is those people are out there. I just got to keep looking, right? That not everybody is a drag through the mud, through the dirt, talk them into this. And 90% of it is how do we approach it? If we're ashamed of it, are we kind of beat around the bush instead of going, I got the greatest shit you've ever heard that we can do together. You know, like that's, that really is part of it. And if we lead with, okay, I know you're going to think this is too much time or I know blah, 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 but let me tell you why it's good. Dude, we're out. I mean, you like you just totally like sliced an arm off, and you know it's it's totally uh, holy grail arm. You know, it's just, just merely a flesh wound. You're like bouncing around with with half the arm off, and half of it's just about we we have the most exciting thing, and sometimes I feel like we're ashamed to share it. So, you know what what I've done, and I, th I think I shared this is I, I set a big crazy goal is, oh, sniff, there goes my lights. There goes all my desk. There goes my life. Okay. Everybody's safe. Nobody got hurt. So I started looking, and my first I said, I want to bring 100 coaches in this year. And then I was like scared the hell out of me because I knew I had to go share it with somebody, so I shared it with Tommy. 
I shared it with Melissa McAllister and I shared it with Mike Ryan and Arnold at corporate. And I'm like, well, shit, I shared it with somebody. Now that means it's real. So 100 coaches in a year, that scares the fool out of me. So what do I, I had to Shalene Johnson it, right? I had to reverse engineer it. So that's eight coaches a month. That's two coaches a week. And I'm like, really, at the end of the day, is two coaches a week really that scary for anybody that everybody that I'm talking to here has been in this business long enough that you know all the answers, you know all the objections, you know all, like, you guys know as much as I do, right? So what Kelly created for me, because I have the attention span of a third grader, is my third grade chart. It has 100 squares on it. It sits on my desk and it looks at me and says, you have stickers to fill. Actually, six and seven will be filled at the end of today. So I obviously didn't hit my goal in month one because I wanted eight coaches in, in January. I got five. But I went back, I'm like, okay, Mindy Winter said minimum of five a month. So at least I got the minimum. And I listened to, um, I'm in the process of listening to, and I may let Wade speak on this a little more because I think he's probably heard more of this than I have. But Eric Worre has a great webinar that I'm going through right now where he's talking about adding 20 people to your business in a month. And it's not about adding 20 people to your business every month. But he got on there and he said, if you're in network marketing and in this type of business, and I've heard Darren Hardy say something very similar. He said, slow and steady will kill you especially if your business is still new. And I still think, myself included, like I don't, I, I look at this and in six years, right? Okay, so let's just, I'm gonna talk to you peer to peer, not upline to downline, okay? So in six years, the team is a little under around 1600 people. Now I'm crazy thankful for every single one of those. But then I also look at somebody like a, a Brandy Botts who's been doing this for two years and her team's already bigger. Like it's 3000 people. I'm like, Oh, cute. Way to go, Brandy. You know? And so I look at that, not in a competitive, Oh, she's better than me thing. It's just like, okay, what are they doing that we're not? And I think it's that we just haven't emphasized putting the business in front of people. Now, how you choose to do that is really where I'm going to encourage you to put your own personality on this. Do you have great success with the introducing team Beachbody video? Maybe. If so, rock it. I'm going to say, though, if somebody hears your story, it's going to be way more powerful. And that's why your assignment this week is to make that video and to post it. You load it to YouTube, post it in the diamond wall, right? I wouldn't make it over five minutes. You know, Mary did a great job. I think her first one, her first video was like three days long and it was a trilogy and there was like Yoda was in it. And it was great. But then, but she did it like, but, but this is part of the process, right? You got to do the first one. You got to do the first one. And then you got to go, wow, I talked for a long time. And then you have to go, you have to be willing to kind of take the editing thing and say, what here, how do we get right to the point? What are the biggest issues? That's always work from the problem backwards. What are the biggest issues that, 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 that being a coach solves for me, right? And make that like three, find three main points. Why, you know, what is it? Was it community? You know, you heard me share on the coach call, you know, part of this was just having a community that I felt a part of. That was a big, that was a big part for me. That's why I knew when I came in that this wasn't temporary for me. So I looked down at, and, 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 and I'm sorry if I missed somebody, um, but looking down at the diamonds from, I just pulled, right when I jumped on the call, I pulled up the January roll call. And this is what I see. I see I had five last month. Jack had four. Tulin, Kobe, I can't even read my own writing. Mayor, uh, Tulin and Kobe and John and Wade had three. Brandy and Mary had two. Jamil, Adrian, Kristen, Bev, and Christina all had one. So we have to take a really honest look. So if we went an entire month and really at the end of the day, guys, Craig Holiday said it best. We got zero control over who gets in. 
right? For every, you know, it's really, I've been on like a kind of a cool tear of people that really have been like, I want to be a coach. How do I sign up? Like Philip Harshon's being that way. But this dude, he was a coach way back in the day and watched me for three years and then was like, okay, I'm going to do it again. I didn't know, but I was being consistent, right? Jessica had, she already had a fan page with 5,000 people and she already had 300, she had a ton of coaches saying, you should be a coach, you should be a coach, you should be a coach. How did I find her? She shared her story on my coach page and I said, hey, how can I help you in what you're doing? I didn't even go in like trying to recruit her because I just assumed she was a coach. And then we got on the, I was like, I said, do you want to jump on the phone? I'll see if I can help you with, uh, with whatever you're doing with your group. So we jumped on the phone. We talked for a while. I'm like, I'm just going to ask you a really dumb question. Are you a coach? She's like, she's like no, I know I should. And her whole holdup was she didn't want to jump into anything she couldn't give 100% to. She thought she didn't have time. And I didn't even try to hard sell her on the phone. I said, look, I said, let me point some things out to you. I said, I said, you know, who told you it takes a lot of time? She's like, well, nobody. I'm like, okay. She goes, and every, you know, all these coaches have already told me I'm already doing it. I'm like, okay, cool. I said, well, I'm not going to push you into anything that you're not ready to do. I said, but you're already doing it. And then it came up that she was saving for a house and they were about to get married. They're about to get engaged. And I said, I'm just curious. I said, how many people have actually, you know, she lost hundred pounds using beach body programs. I'm like, how many people have, have started programs because of you? She's like, I can't even count. I'm like, I'm just curious. Where do you send those? She said, beachbody.com. And I said, wow. I said, cool. I said, you know, that's your house payment. And she's like, yeah. I said, well, cool. I said, look, I'm not going to try to close you on this phone call or anything. I said, I just wanted to chat. I said, I just wanted to get to know you. And I did that and we hung up. And from then on, I just became her cheerleader online. I'd stop by and just encourage her. And finally, she's like, Jimmy, this is dumb. She goes, I put five more people on beachbody.com today. She's like, where do we start? And she's taken off, right? And that was that, it was that relationship story. So it's that, it's that balance of putting, putting the business in front of enough people, being bold enough to say, Hey, uh, another example, I got a buddy of mine that I think is about to sign up that I went, that he and I worked at Disney together. A girl he used to live with is having success as a coach. He shared one of my posts with her. I reached out to him and just had a thank. I was like, Hey, thanks. I sent him a private Facebook message. Thanks, man. I really appreciate you giving me a shout out. Yeah. This girl's a brand new coach and just figured she would benefit from following you. And I jokingly, I said, that's great. I wish you to like point at her my way before she signed up. Ha ha ha. He's like, yeah, I know. And I said, he goes, but he goes, she's already having a lot of success with this. It's really cool. I said, cool. And just as an aside, I kind of pulled a Janelle Summers and I said, I said, you're a pretty fit dude. I said, have you ever thought about doing this? He's like, actually, yeah. He's like, I've really been looking at it. I didn't, it was just, have you ever thought of, and Janelle says she leads every conversation. Have you ever considered, you know, if they say no, why not? And that may, it may die in the conversation there, but Literally just like, have you ever considered and shutting up and letting somebody talk to you about it um, is great. And I feel like the less we get away from like the sneaky script or how to, it's the closing word. If we're just an open friggin' book and say, look, cool, let me answer some questions for you. And they may, that may bring them around and they may still feel like they don't have to. Right now I'm dealing with people that I'm like, I was like, let's talk. And I'm really frank with them about all the answers. And they're still like, I don't know if I have time or I don't know if I can do this. So it's not going to be a hundred percent. But if we're looking to close three to five people, like I was going to say, Craig Holiday says, we have zero control over who gets in. What Mindy talks about Winder is you've got to put the numbers on your side. So do you have 10 kind of ongoing conversations? So another thing that I have here on my very messy desk, this is my pipeline. These are all people that coaching has come up one way or another. There's some of these people I've literally already sent. They're like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And I've sent them sign up directions. They still haven't pulled the trigger. I'll follow up every once in a while. Hey, we got a basis group starting or how are things going? And I usually try to follow up in some kind of positive manner. Um, but literally that's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oops, she's off because she signed up. 18. So I still have 18 people in my loop. So look, if you're like, I don't have a loop, how do you make a loop? You really got to go take, go look at your customers. I would go look up every person I have on HD. 
make that video that talks about how to take advantage of being a discount coach. Quit treating that like a bad word. Why? Because, and I had this, I've had this conversation with Mary, how many discount coaches do we know that are rock stars right now? And if we can get them in and help them have amazing results and then just follow up every once in a while and be like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm about to start a new group. Do you know anybody who might want to do this? Oh, yeah, so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Great. Well, send them my way. I'm going to send them through your link just as a thank you. And we'll get your Shakeology free next month. That cool? Great. All it takes is one stinking check. And they're going to be like, so how else do I do this? So what else is that? Like if we show them how easy it is, and maybe that's us doing that first legwork for them, you know? Um, uh, you know, and John makes a great point. The seven-day quick start is great. But for the, like, I'm, I'm just considering those people that just like, I don't want to do this coaching thing at all and just get in on the discount. Great. And I want you to just focus completely on your fitness and let me know when people comment on things or if it happens to come up in a conversation. So that's where that pipeline's got to be. Um, so that's been, that was my focus coming in here was looking at our numbers from last month and saying, we all, myself included, can do better because the dynamic personalities we have on here, every person should be clamoring to work with you. Each one of you has an amazing story. And you need to give yourself the credit to know that it's a really powerful story. Um, regardless if you've lost any weight, regardless if you've paid off debt, or if you don't, like, go back and give yourself some credit on how much you've made. Maybe that's going into your previous back office and just looking at the accumulation of how much money you have made since you've been a coach. Sometimes just looking at that and a number that you could share with somebody privately saying, look, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to cut any corners with you, but I didn't want to do this. I, I think of you, Christy, because like you didn't want to do this. Like, you know, it, it dragging you by your hair, caveman style to be like, come on, girl. That story of knowing how much you didn't want to do this. So great. Because you surround yourself with lots of people that don't want to do this. <laughs> um, you know, so that, that's good. So I'm going to um, so I'm going to open it up. Let's have a little round table here. Q&A style. Um, if it gets too, too loud, I'll mute some. Loud, I'll mute some. Oh, here I go. Yeah, 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 Okay, I'm not going to unmute Brian because he's at work. And I'm not going to unmute. Oh, Brandy's in the car now, so she can actually. So does anybody off this topic, Kristen's unmuted. Adrian has a car full of munchkins. Okay, let's go. Hey, okay, John, go ahead, man. Yeah, can I, I want to uh, echo what Jimmy's saying because I, I had a meeting with Barbie about a week ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, tell him about that. It flipped my mindset, you know, because so my journey in the business, first two years, I was signing everybody as coaches and they're all turning into discount coaches and I was running a charity. But the and so what I did was I made an assumption, OK, I shouldn't sign them as coaches. I should sign them as customers and then only really hand pick my coaches. Well, guess what? I made the wrong assumption for the problem I had. So instead of, you know, assuming that what I should have realized is the reason they're not doing anything is not because I'm making them coaches. It's because I'm not supporting them enough and I'm not showing them the value of, of the coach side of things. Right. Um, I'm just making them coaches and just throwing them out there. So now, you know, with the challenge from Barbie, you know, it, it was this kind of like why, you know, we don't assume people when we might make our memory jogger list. Mm -hmm. Well, you shouldn't assume people when you decide your coaches versus customers list either. So now I'm doing everyone as coaches, but I'm giving them as much, idea about what coaching really is and all the value and everything up front and like Jimmy's saying you know discount coach even if it's a discount the reason I mentioned the seven-day quick start I'm not pushing that as oh, let's do the business from day one what I'm doing is by the way here's this little thing I just want you to look it over I just want you to fill it out and get it back to me you may never use it again let's just use it as a reference list if nothing else and then if I can then find like you know two or three people from that and they see a check from that, like if I sign them under that person, boom, they're in the coaching, right? So I'm using the seven day as a very no pressure thing of, by the way, since you do have this coaching opportunity and there is a lot of cool stuff that could come from that, just fill this out real quick um, and just see what happens. The one thing I'm, I'm catching myself on even this week is, um, is just, I'm still rushing the emails. You know, I, I, I'm taking 
the post that I'm making, I'm getting a ton of response for 21 day fix and I'm making an email uh, that I'm saying, you know, first I want to know more about you, what, what your goals are, what you're wanting to do, what you're eating and stuff. And they're responding to that. Great. Well then I'm immediately following that up with the clothes, like all the information and stuff. And I'm just not hitting it. And I'm learning, I've got to slow it down even more, you know, in the past, I would slow it down more and then they would never respond. Well, I just got to get over that and just keep doing it that way and, and do it more of a drip to find out deeper and deeper. Cause I tell my coaches do that. You know, I, I have this thing, be the doctor, you know, really diagnose their issue before you help them. And um, I've just got to do that myself. And cause it's, it's the nice thing is I'm, I'm being harder on myself. It's only the fifth. So I've got a lot of time left, but I'm already treating it like it's the end of the month. Like, like Jimmy's always said, right. I'm already like, Oh my gosh, I'm way behind now. Just because I've got this huge goal now because Barbie's like, look, your numbers last year don't match your goals this year. You're going to have to do like 10 coaches a month. Yeah. So that's why my goal is like 10 a month. And so January, I only found that out like near the end of January. So January is real small for me, but I've got a much bigger goal now. And so that's my thing. I want to get everyone else to, to, to input, but I will say before I'm done, I want to get the genius – knowledge that's here to help me with an issue before we're done i've got an email that's a no i want to turn into a yes so just put that okay. out there we'll come back around to that and i want to go back real quick before i do the next thing and i'm going to ask wade about this too is i didn't finish the thing about what eric worry talked about putting 20 coaches in your business in a month and his whole point was you got to start off fast so let's let's just i mean we're all been coaches for a while here but let's talk let's treat this month like it's it's this and he's like look the whole tortoise and the hare thing you have to have a hair point for then you can go back to toward it's like getting a plane off the ground you got to go like a hundred miles an hour first and put a bunch in and that's literally i go back and i've heard barbie say that before and i've heard jason diebold and these people that have this huge volumes is they threw a bunch of people in early and then they kind of you find out who's for real you know and what the nice thing is is you're not leaving these people unsupported because now with a structure like your coach basics you can support everybody because we're working in groups, right? We're working. It's not so much one-on-one -on -one and an hour GSR with everybody. You have tools like what we're doing right now where, you know, you can learn in groups. And so you shouldn't be nervous about bringing in a lot of people at once because you have the tools and the system at your hand to support those. So wait, if you want to, do you want to fill in? You, uh, you may have more details on that or just kind of what you've learned and kind of what you've experienced since you put that in action. Um, well, I, I totally agree with what he says. You just got to give it a hundred percent for like three months, four months, five months, and then you can just kind of pull back on the thrusters a little bit, not recruit so heavily. And then, um, <clears throat> so I, I tried doing that with the super Saturday events that I hosted at my house and, um, I did pick up three coaches out of that, but I was expecting a lot more. Right. So a lot of the people wanted to, um, do a program first because they haven't even done a program yet. They were just coming over to my house to support me. Right. So they're all having great results with the program. So they're, they're starting to hit me up on the coaching idea a little bit. So I might get a couple more conversions this month. And that's great. But I had, I had bigger expectations last month. I, I don't know. I screwed up. You know, I, I should have had success club 10 easily last month. I just don't quite understand what I did wrong. But I didn't know, invite enough people, obviously. Right. But you know what? Like, and I was reminded of this, I'm watching this Brendan Bouchard thing right now. And he said, you know, the only way to learn is to do right. And you had all those people showed up. I, I think back of times where I held meetings where nobody showed up, man. So you could, you can't convert yeah. zero at a zero. So if you had, you know, if you had three coaches and you got, you know, however many challengers out of that as well, man, you built your business. You know, and because you got out of your comfort zone to do something uh, new. So don't completely, I mean, give yourself credit where credit's due. It's just a matter of continuing to fail forward, if you will. It's like, okay, great. Well, that happened. You know, what, what's the next step? How can I, how can I take what worked from that? Because obviously there was some success. It wasn't like nobody showed up and nothing was out of that. So there was some success. How do I focus on the part that worked? What, you know, what was it about the three people that signed up? that really hit on for them. And then sometimes and nobody in here is going to bat a thousand ever. I don't care if you've been doing this business for 25 years, you're never not going to hear a no because, and I, Craig said this before and then Larry Zimber used to say that you can give the worst presentation to the right person and they're going to get it. And you can give the most killer presentation to the wrong person and they're still going to say no. And you're like, but I was awesome. And I have to remind myself <laughs> all the time. I'm like, 
I kicked ass. I handled every objection. And they're still just dragging their feet. And it's about that person. It's not about you or how you presented it. Yeah. I, um, I, you know, I've been hitting up my chiropractor now for months and I've given me, you know, the success for home from magazine and everything. And he just, he will just not do it. Not yeah. at all. I talked to him about Wayne Wyatt. He loves Shakeology, but he won't buy it on home direct. He'll just buy one bag at a time. And so he sent me an email yesterday and says, wait, just bring in a stack of business cards, a bunch of information. And he says, I'm just going to start referring people to for now. Hey, it's so, so funny. It's so funny you mentioned that. So I had a chiropractor, my chiropractor in New York city, same thing. Signed him up. He was already, he, he loved 10 minute trainer. He was trying to get his clients to do 10 minute trainer all the time. Right. Finally get him signed up as a coach. And all of a sudden his mindset changed and he had zero. Like, so beforehand he was getting all, his, all his customers. Do, and all of a sudden he, for whatever, he had some mental block with all of a sudden when he was getting paid for it, he wasn't, he wasn't re recommending it the same way. And he quit. And Kelly and I went back up to visit, I guess for Sean, for Sean T's wedding. And we went to see him to get an adjustment. He's like, man, he goes, I don't know why. It just didn't work when I was signed up. He's like, he goes, but I'm happy to refer people to you, man. He's like, we have a great relationship. And I'm not going to, instead of looking at it as a fail, I'm like, great. That's another pipeline for me. Because one oh, of yeah. those customers, there could be your next, you know, star diamond coach or whatever. Like never poo-poo somebody. Especially, and think of this. How powerful is that if a professional is vouching for you that you have third party edification from a professional dude. So those people are already coming to you with a huge level of trust, even over somebody you just meet randomly on social media. Yeah. And so what was my other issue? Well, my, my biggest disappointment right now is I just checked my back office and I have 11 inactive coaches for me. That's a pile because I'm hanging on to diamond again, just by the skin of my teeth. Right. I, I just don't understand the level of, why there's no commitment to Shakeology with these people, you know, they're in and out all the time. And I know you guys have that all too, but it, yeah, it, it uh, just stinks. It's twofold. It's really, it, it's, it's kind of like what John talked about. <clears throat> it's establishing that value early on and then reiterating when they first have the success with it, reminding them, wow, it's great. That's from your Shakeology, blah, blah, blah. Like really reinforcing those early, like right now I'm doing a five day clean eating challenge. I started with 150 people in there. There's 75 right now, but the ones that are still in there and they're giving me, Hey, I feel this. Then I'm just, I'm repeating back to them what they're telling me. Wow. So doing this made you feel that way. That's great. Boom. Like I'm just making sure they're remembering you feel this way because you did this. You felt this way because you did this. But again, it's also a reason why just like I'm looking right now, just in my first business center alone, I have 23 coaches going to be inactive. 23. I know. You know, um, I have more coaches in there, but that's why, again, I'm going to go back to what this calls about. If we're adding three to five new people, you're going to find your rock stars. You're going to find those people that run, but you got to go through the number. Cause if you don't, if you're bringing in one coach a month or two coaches a month, your hopes and dreams are, are you're so stressed over these two people doing something that it's not. And it's funny. I told Kelly this yesterday. There was somebody who was, who's been dragging their feet about signing up. And then another girl just came out of nowhere and it's like, oh, I'm ready to sign up. Like, wasn't even on my pipeline list, right? She signed up today. And I told Kelly, I said, man, it really is true. When you have so many people in your pipeline, you don't stress the people that flake on you because all, it's not like you're all your hopes and dreams are in this one individual. And they can feel that pressure too coming from you that you're, oh my God, you're my next superstar. Well, nobody wants to be that person. Nobody wants that pressure. When you're just like, great, come in the team. Ah, oh, it's just kind of laid back. And that's really what I, the more I, I've kind of talked to Janelle Summers, she brings it laid back too. She still sign, she'll sign up coaches at the 39.95. She's like, great. She's like, there's this challenge pack thing over here. My successful coaches do, they get you some stuff for free, but you don't have to do that. And the people are like, well, wait a minute, what's that? And those are the same people like, I can barely afford $40. She just keeps it real cash, you know? And so I've toyed with that too. You know, my newest coach today, you know, came in on 39.95 and that's my job to paint the bigger picture and to get them in a basis group and say, you know, right now she's like, I just can't afford Shakeology. I'm like, great. Well, let's start a five day clean eating group and let's get you some commissions. You know, I, I right before I jumped to this call, I created a clip from that spree cast that Christine Dwyer did that just talks about the five day free eating group. What I would suggest to all of you is use that in your basics groups. 
get everybody in your basics groups at the very least to start a five day cleaning group because it gets them moving. Um, okay, I just want to talk to Christy because I want to know what this expression on her face is. What Hi. expression? I don't Hi. know. I can't, I can't tell if you're thinking or if you're like frustrated oh. or if you're. No, I was actually agreeing with you because um, a lot of what you just said, I just, I did. Um, I signed a coach on January 31st. She was a military discount coach and she did it the thirty nine ninety five way. And, you know, she got it for free. And then today she sent me a message saying, Hey, I'm going to do 21 day fix and I'm signing up with Shakeology. How do I do that? And I was like, well, shit, we should have just done the challenge back. But you know, you know, we worked around it. And so I was agreeing with you with, yeah. with all of that. It's um, like just getting in the culture, right? It's getting, whether it's your PS coach group or whether it's the crew wall or whatever you're plugging people into, they see everybody else and they're like, Oh, what am I not doing that everybody else is, you know? And sometimes it's, it's that third party testimony as opposed to just you as their sponsor. Yeah. And, um, uh, a couple weeks ago I went to Lincoln, Nebraska and did the Doug Fitzgerald, right. you know, Shanti event thing, which was really cool. Cause right around that time I was just kind of thinking about my January or well, my 2014 goals and stuff. And, um, I kind of just taken a step back because last year was kind of frustrating for me. I thought with my business and stuff. So, um, you know, I kind of, you know, just, I've been so frustrated about working on, my coaches that I currently have that I kind of just stopped recruiting and stuff. And, um, and so that my whole mindset has changed, you know, I dropped the ego and I talk about my story. I talk about the biz in front of, like, I used to be ashamed of it, honestly, but now I just talk about it and I'm just like, you know what? Screw you. If you don't want to listen to me, I really don't care, you know? So, and you I have kind such, of, and you have such way. a cool story about like, the play money, because you always talk about the play money that's become for you guys. Because you and Brett have yeah, jobs or whatever, but you're like, hey, look, we got some cars and we got some washer and dryer. And we're like, like I always feel like you have the really fun story because you're like, look, because you know, it goes back to like where you know how Jim Rohn talks about he never wanted to give up his full time job because it ruined his part time story. <laughs> that's you. That's completely you because you're like, look, I do this part time and, and I'm driving that and my washing cars and this and we go here and. I mean, that's so powerful because people look at my story and they go, oh, well, Jimmy, you do this full time. It must, it must take a lot of time. I think in some ways you got a more powerful hook story than I do because you're doing all this part time. Oh yeah. I, I tell people, yeah, March, I'm going to Anaheim and you know, there's a cruise and then June we're going to Vegas and blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. And people are like, how do you do that? And I was like, all through beach body. I do that all part time, you know, and they're like, wow, but still can't get them to sign, but it's fine. Right. But, um, but the seeds are planted, lot. you know? Yeah. And so, you know, and with us having this huge snowstorm this last couple of days, people have just been, I mean, I've been on my computer like nonstop the last two days. So, um, which is kind of nice, you know, cause um, Brad also has been kind of a little involved in it, which, you know, any little bit of help, you nice. know, is encouraging, but, um, no, just something that Jeff Hill stuck, you know, kind of what he said kind of stuck with me. And, um, he was just like, eliminate like all that wishy-washy non-powerful language in your vocabulary. And then, you know, he's like, put a freaking steak in the ground and grow some guts. And I was like, Oh my God, I just needed to hear that. So I freaking did it. And lately I've just been very, just, I don't know, heart, not really heartfelt with my posting, but I'm just kind of like, you know, guys, seriously, what's 21 days. Let's try it. If you don't like it, you can tell me to shove those containers somewhere and, you know, right. say F you. And I mean, I got a ton of responses from that post. You just know why? Yeah, you know why? You just see? Because that's you. That's not you trying to, to talk like corporate says or talk like this or use this e-card. It's you and everybody in here. Just, so don't listen to what Christy just said and say, well, then I got to be, you know, I got to be kind of hard and edgy. But that's Christy. That's, that's her personality, right? So be you in your posts. And, mm -hmm. and that's something, you know, Kelly really called me on the carpet with how I work with you guys because I would be sitting on the couch talking about the team or talking about a coach. And she's like, why don't you talk to the team the way you talk to me on the couch? Because I, I just there for a long time, I felt like I had to be the cheerleader all the time. 
right? And it's not that I have to be an a-hole or something, but just, I just want to be, I mean, like, I feel like, dude, we're all peers here. We're all in this thing together. So I do a disservice if I don't just talk real to you guys. Same thing with your customers or the people watching you. They want you because if you've cut and pasted what Brandy Botts or what Amber Scott did because they had success, you're not going to have success with it because it's not your voice. That was Brandy Botts or Amber Scott's or Clarissa's voice. They just figured out what their voice is. And people that follow you know if what you're posting is from your heart or from, you know, you being pissed off or whatever, or they know if it's something that you were like, oh, well, this worked for them. It must be the magic words. It's not. It's totally not. It's just because it worked for them because it was them. Mm -hmm. But everything else is really good. I mean, nice. can't, can't complain. I um, start teaching insanity at a gym in a couple weeks. and I have oh, a new class starting on Monday mornings at 6 a.m. John, if you want to come with. Um, <laughs> 6 a.m. on Mondays at SMU. Wow. Yeah. But I get to promote like all my business stuff and like I brought cool. in flyers and did all that stuff. So it's kind of cool. That's so we'll great. See. The gym owner is going to get on Shakeology and some, do some body beasts. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. He's going to get all the hot freshmen. That's what he's going to get. Yeah, right. Kelly's thrilled. You're going to go teach who? What? <laughs> hey, pretty Bev. Talk to me, girl. What's up? What do you want me to talk to you about, Jimmy? <laughs> I don't know. Tell me something fabulous. I don't know. Just fill me in. Good, bad, or the ugly, whatever. Just or what you've taken away from this chit chat so far. Well, okay, you just you just asked me like three different things there. <laughs> the How good, long have we known each other? Are you surprised? Like, yeah. Well, okay. So, um, I'm dealing with a coach that really tries hard, but has memory issues, and <laughs> um. And really just kind of throw stuff out there and doesn't um, doesn't really learn much before and I'm, I'm having a really hard time with her but she's but she's given a go at it you know that's I just have to keep saying that she's she's working it you know I mean at least she's trying at least she's doing something um, I just wish that you know she would learn a little bit too that would be really nice <laughs> I, I would, um, I, I'm going to stop you there for a second. I will let you know, I would always rather have that coach than the coach, because I'm dealing with a coach that stays in learning mode right now. And I asked in my group today, what did everybody do today? And everybody named what they did, and she rearranged her schedule so she knows where her work hours are. And I'm like, that's cute, but you didn't do anything. Like, it's that busy work. So I would much rather have your issue. And I understand that because they post something, you're like, oh, geez, please. But at least she's doing something. So at least you realize that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what I just keep doing. I just keep saying that to myself over and over again. Because I have plenty of coaches that aren't doing anything. Right. You know, that they're, I have ones that are really good discount coaches that keep saying, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it, and they don't do anything at all, um, and at least she's doing something, so that's, that's what I just keep telling myself. With your discount um, coaches, let me ask you a question real quick, with yeah. your discount coaches, have you ever offered to, where I'm starting to start with my discount coaches, just saying, okay, great, um, I'm just curious, before we get into if you can do this business or not, have you had anybody get started or say anything because of your results, and if the answer is yes, then I sometimes will step in for that first one or two to like get the ball rolling. Like, Hey, do I need to answer questions for somebody? Or do you just want to send them my raise referral and I will put them through your link? Um, as that, if you tried something, have you, have you gone that way with those, those people that have said that they, they want to, but don't. Um, no, I really haven't gone to that extent. I've definitely walked them through like planning an idea of like, okay, so you have these people that you want to talk to and, you know, get their list and then, and then, okay, well, you should, you should start planning some type of a challenge group, you know, and explaining that situation, like what you should do when you're doing a challenge group or, you know, different examples, whatever would work best for them. And um, even offering to do it, you know, with them, um, having them put their people into my existing challenge groups. Right. And, um, 
and it never really gets past like they they just I've never actually gone and taken their names of the people and done the work for them and I guess maybe that's what I should do and not always just it's just some another way to look at it it's stuff I've tried that you know when you're always just throwing stuff against the wall just trying to give ideas because sometimes that's worked for me and sometimes it hasn't but uh I always just think if I can man if I can get them a check if I can get them a $30 check sometimes sometimes it acts sometimes it doesn't but sometimes people go oh how do I, what else can I do you know because then it becomes real yeah yeah I've got a lot of people that are like oh well I've got I've got people that are getting the uh the Shakeology sampler pack and it's like that's wonderful now support them and show them the you know what the Shakeology is doing for them and you know and then I guess they, I don't really know exactly what happens with them there. Right. <laughs> they fall off. It's like, okay, well, what happened there? Well, I don't know. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Come it's on. that following up. It's, it's kind of that, hey, we have a, you know, we have a hundred percent success rate for people that don't open the packages, get no results. Yeah. Like you got to make sure that they're, you know, make sure that they're using it. So. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Cool. Cool. I'm yeah. glad that I'm glad you're doing well. It's always nice. I love this because I get to, it's like I get to hang out with everybody for a minute. Um, uh, Mary, how are you? Good. Can you hear me? I can. You're well lit. Oh, I know. This office is like terrible. It shows all your pimples. <laughs> Just don't squeeze them. Right. Um, well, I wanted to say one thing. Uh, one of the... Uh, First of all, tagging on to putting the business in front of people so many times a week, I personally changed um, my to do so that so that message. Oh. I I have it scheduled for Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and so it's just in the awesome note MWS. I know Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. I have to send at least one. Now my goal is five a week, and Brand or Brandy kills me. And I know Brandy, you're on here, and I know you can see me and hear me. So. Um, I actually am stepping out there on Saturdays and sending three. So I get five in cause I got a big goal. Good. Um, but the person I sent it to today as my C to C, uh, she is actually a friend from high school. She's in my current, uh, X three challenge group and she's a runner. She does marathons, the whole nine yards. And randomly she responded to a, um, a general social media post on X three and was like, yeah, I want to get a little weight training in with my running. And I was like, oh my God, awesome. Well, anyway, she's the, the group started 120. So she's a couple weeks in. So I thought, you know, she seems like she's really liking this. She's really engaged in the group. I sent her a message. She responded in 15 minutes. You know what she said? She's like, this is absolutely perfect. This is just what I need to hold myself accountable to my own fitness program. So when I looked at her name today, I was like, ah, man, she's a runner. She's not really into all this stuff, but she, she was waiting for it, right? So I think just like John said, we have to stop judging the, the coach prospects just like we don't judge our customer prospects and just hit send. Oh, Worst hey, thing to say is no. Can I, can I piggyback on that? Something else that I've really learned from Clarissa as well. So like yesterday, Kel got a message from a girl that wanted to be in our group and she wanted to do uh, the 21 day fix and so did her mom. So like, great, we can get you set up with a challenge pack going to be this this and then we literally do a ps ps if you wanted to get 25 percent off of this or if you want to if you want to be able to get this for free i can do that as well it's it's a time sensitive offer so just let me know if you want to go that way and it's literally like the last thing in a ps as a throwaway thing at the end and it's something i learned from clarissa the same thing that she does when somebody wants shakeology you know at the oh ps I can throw in P90X3 for an extra 40 bucks, but it's a, it's time sensitive. It's only a one-time thing. Let me know if you want to do that as well. And it's just, it's the same thing that I was saying Janelle does with the 39.95. Oh, we can waive this 39.95 fee and get you some products that are going to help you some lose some weight. You don't have to, but it's there. And there's something about that throwaway, not hard sell that people go, Oh, I didn't know we could do that. And so that's really, that's really cool that, that you took that step from somebody and just, and that was the same way. So the girl's like, well, tell me more about that. And they're like, okay, well, it's being a coach, but doesn't, and I always set up, I'm like, nothing's required of you, no quota. And she came back and she was like, oh, I've been curious about being a coach. I just didn't know how to get started. And it wasn't like one of those, okay, I'll just do this for a discount. She's like, oh. And then Kel's like, well, would you want to be in a basics group to learn how to run this business? Yep. We're like, okie dokie. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Those people are out there. 
Um, somebody popped in the chat and said if I would send them my template, and I absolutely will. But I'll tell you that the very first, the way it started, it the way that it starts is, hey, listen, since you're a friend and not just a customer, I wanted to offer you an opportunity to save money on your Shakeology and any other Beachbody products. We're allowed to sign coaches as discount coaches, meaning you don't have to work the business. Signing as a coach will give you 25% discount, which will save you $198 a year on your Shakeology alone. And it kind of goes on just to say. Hey, but if you decide you do want to help people and work the business, that's cool too. Just let me you know, blah, blah, blah. It's not real long, but it's kind of makes them feel special. Like, Hey, I don't, and I end it with, listen, I don't offer this to everyone. So it's just kind of, um, makes them feel like I'm reaching out to them and it's exclusive. Yeah. Listen, the thing I wanted to say, to, that's good. I like that. That's good wording. What was it? That they were allowed to like, like, eh, we're, we're, we, we can, we're not supposed to, but you know, it is like you're doing them a favor. Well, and at the end of that, um, this is the part that most people actually respond to me and say, yeah, you're right. It is a no brainer because at the very end I say, um, this is how I was approached. Uh, something about it being a no, it was a no brainer to me, you know, because I was started out as a discount coach or whatever. So most people will respond and say, yeah, that is a no brainer. There's no catch or something like that. Um, yeah. The other thing is we, a lot of us are talking about our, our um, coaches going inactive and, and things like that. And I think that, you know, one of the things I do every Saturday morning is um, I send out what I call my in, inactive messages to my customers. The people that are in my accountability group or the people in my, in my um, challenge groups is that I, if I don't see anything from them in four, five, six days, just to say, Hey, just checking in. Are you okay? I think we need to do the same thing with our coaches. Um, not, checking in with them if they're working the business, but checking in with them if they're still drinking their Shakeology and they're still working out. Because if we keep our coaches drinking Shakeology and we keep our coaches engaged in their fitness programs, they're not going to want to go inactive because they're going to want to keep their discount. So I think sometimes we need to, and I had to remind myself that too, that I need to keep my coaches just as engaged in their fitness programs as I do my customers. Right. Um, so they don't go inactive on me. The other thing is, um, you know, Christine Dwyer, I mean, we all could learn from her. My gosh, I mean, why would we ever tweak anything that she does? But I think at the same time, just like you said, Jimmy, just because a, an elite level superstar coach finds that they're successful doing it one way doesn't necessarily mean it works for all of us. Like one of the things Christine says a lot is that she doesn't run her challenge groups for the full time of the program. So she doesn't necessarily run a 60 day insanity challenge group or a 90 day P90X challenge group or whatever. She just sort of gets them started. Um, and that's so cool that that works for her. But like, I feel like I want to see people through to the end right. to, because I think statistically when Beachbody talks about people, how many, the percentage of people who don't finish, like I want them to finish because I want them to move to the next program, you know, and I want them to finish because I want them to keep Shakeology. So I just think that, that for those of us who are leaders, as we talk to our other coaches and we, they hear these elite coaches saying this, every suggestion isn't the end all be all, you know, it's just maybe what, what worked well for them. And um, they I'm got laughing to that because I'm trial thinking, and error of their own too. Exactly. And, and it works for her obviously very well. <laughs> uh, and I was laughing about my video because I, I finally made the video. I took it from a trilogy to a three and a half minute video, which was fantastic. Really um, good. And the funny thing, and the, it was a novel. Um, the funny thing is, is I've not used the video like you're suggest suggesting. I've not sent it to a prospect. I shared it on social media. I put it on my website. I did all these other, put it on YouTube, but I've never thought to myself, wow, I should just send that to someone. I never even thought that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm laughing and I wrote the note down and, um, and, and you know, go ahead. I was just going to go to, I was going to pull Kristen on here because real quick, um, if she's still on here, hold on. Uh, mm -hmm. Randy's phone. Oh, whoops. Nope. Oh, cancel. Kristen, are you still there? Kristen. Can you hear me? Yeah. Are you there? No. Hello. Can you hear Hello? me? Hello. Hey. hey. Yeah. Sorry. I couldn't get my mute off. No, it's fine. Um, so on that level, didn't you do something like that where you made a video that basically said something in effect of, hey, I don't usually send this to everybody, but it was kind of a customer to coach conversion video? Exactly. It was for um, customers that I had in my challenge groups that were really, really involved and engaged and supportive to each other. 
to other people on the group. And so they were essentially coaching already. Um, and I had that call with you and you were saying, hey, you know, those those are your future coaches. So I did make that video. Um, sorry, dog. I did send it out um, to some people at that time, but kind of like Mary, I just kind of forgot about it. So this is a good reminder to send it out again. Um, and, I, and I have one more question too um, about what you were talking about as far as doing the, the discount coaches. Um, I've been kind of focusing on that again. Like you were saying at first you did it and then you're like, no, no, no. And then you did again. So um, even with those coaches, I mean, I guess it all works into your volume and bonus and all of that. And then you're just hopeful that they'll share it with more people and it can turn into well, think more of it, in that respect. Is that well, what you're? Yeah. I mean, think of it this way. And Mary and I had this conversation too. Cause so you, I think you and Mary are so similar in how your businesses are built because you guys both do a ton of retail and you have a lot of customers that just adore you. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. And the only thing standing from you guys in the next level is sheer volume of coaches, not volume by like team volume, yeah. number of coaches. And think of it this way. Let's say you only signed up people that said they're going to work this business. Man, that doesn't mean you're batting a thousand with those people that they're all going to actually do it because we all have people that are going to sit. So, True. so think of it this way. Okay. I could bring in just three people in a month or two that say, yes, I want to work this business, or I can bring in 10 to 20 people that all want to save some money that get a part of a community that once they're in, I help them see the bigger picture, make sure that their the results are awesome. Hey, if you're getting a referral, just let me know and I'll show you how to get your kickback and I'll take care of that for you or, or however you want to word that. Um, you have the same percentage of right. somebody activating and the light coming on to go, oh, this is how this coach thing works with more people from a discount perspective than you are, like John talked about, prejudging or, or somebody before. Yeah. You got to put right. the Right, yeah. And, okay, that, that's true, Mary. We should chit-chat too because, girl, you're on fire with everything that you're doing. And I've kind of been behind the scenes um, really working my business uh, in the background, but just trying to be a little bit less on Facebook because I have so many challenge groups now, it's taking up a lot of time and I'm trying to go back to Shaleen Smart Success and set business hours and things like that. So, you know, I've been quieter, but um, a ton is going on. So Good. I, I just, no, my, my push pull, everything is, yeah, I just need coaches and that's my focus this year also. And I love hearing about your board and John talking about, okay, well, you know, I've got ex coaches. And so that's, that's my goal is to work on the coaches this year, big time. Cool. Um, man, I'm not going to be able to get to everybody. I have a call that I got to take it five fifteen. Um, Hey, let me just let me pull up Vicky here. Uh, Vic, what's up girl? Not much. Just got out of work. Nice. Um, so how are things been going? I don't know how much you've got to jump in and, and uh, listen to and, yeah, I got on um, right when Wade was talking. Things have been good with me. Um, ever since the Christine call, I've kind of turned a new leaf in terms of finding a new little pocket of people that I hadn't reached before in my own mm -hmm. um, network. And so I ran a five-day challenge with like 30 people in it that was pretty successful. Um, a good amount of them are transferred over and doing another five-week with me. And then a good amount of those people have converted to 21 day fix and hopefully they'll be ordering it. Okay. Well, um, hey, I've will you, had a few do it. Will you share that? Cause I'm, I'm so as the newbie here, I think the last time I ran a free five day challenge group was when like was the one I did with Christy and ended up, you know, like that was that long ago. I don't know why I went away from that mm -hmm. model. It worked pretty well. Um, and Christy and Kelly. Yeah. And um, so what did you find that process was as far as free, free to pay? And was everybody pretty, like, what was the percentages of people that were excited? Did you have any kickback because, oh, we went from free to pay? Like, how was that transition? So mine haven't, so in the second week when I, when people wanted to join in again, I haven't made them make a purchase yet. 
I did like Christine suggested, and I had them each sign up for a free Team Beach Body account. Um, but around the same time, I was also having anyone that was in my 21 Day Fix Challenge group also sign up for that free account, just so that they'd be all set up to purchase yesterday or whenever it came out. Yeah. So most of the people had no problem with that because it was already a free account. Um, and then the people that are going to 21 Day, I've had two girls drop off because they're like, I can't afford it. And I've let them stay in my five day group. They won't be included in future groups, but you know, I'm not going to, not going to cut them for that. Cause one of the girls I do think has really good coaching potential. I found her on Instagram, which I've never done before and reached out to her and got her plugged into my group. She started posting about my group on her own page and recruited six of her own friends into my group. Well. So yeah, so it, it was a pretty rad thing that I saw happening. And so I kind of like, went down the coaching road with her and she's like, no, I'm not ready for that. Like I can't even afford Shakeology. I know I have a lot more work to do on her, but I kind of want to build up her confidence in results and in me and in the process first. So I'm kind of like taking a step back, but still keeping her, you know, close under my wing while I do it. Um, but it's, it's so far, it's been a pretty organic transfer between the people who are seeing good results in the five day and actually being, active in there and they're the ones that are already have already purchased their 21 day fix and whatnot and then the people that were like sending me their after picture saying i don't really see a difference like they dropped off and that's fine they don't have okay. to love what okay. i'm doing but the ones that are appreciating it and feeling better are the ones that i think are going to be long term and they'll turn into customers because it'll be like a natural progression i think Awesome. Hold on. I'm just, uh, I'm letting Kelly know to reschedule my 515 because I'd rather talk with you guys. Um, <laughs> but I'm definitely finding more success doing it this way. This past summer I did like the five day, which was kind of free, but it was like, you had to be on Shakeology. Mm -hmm. So it was like a $20 like minimum buy-in, but I barely got five people for each of those groups. And this time I've had no problem filling, you know, 20 to 30 spots. And everyone's commenting every day. Everyone's posting every day. And it's really good, like, for building morale. And so I'm seeing people that are kind of rising in that group that I can kind of target as potential coaches. So I'm finally actually seeing those people, whereas in the previous challenges, nobody was even engaging in it. So and it's see, neat to what, see that actually happening and coming to fruition. Well, that's what Kelly and I were talking through and debating this afternoon was, so we're on Wednesday. We live on Friday. It's do we do another free five days? with a membership, you know, cause I have other coaches in there. Like Christine said, like it, it's everybody, right? I just sent it to my entire list and like right. 70 popped in and we're down to 70 still. It was 150. I think they got in. We're down to 70 something. But it's amazing to see 70 people actually inter interact. And I couldn't do this without, yeah. Kelly. I mean, Kelly and Megan are helping me make sure people are in because I would never like get it all done. But mm -hmm. the thought was either to do another free five days or the next one's 20 bucks and you're basically getting the sample pack in addition and make it like, yeah. make it 14 days and that way we can start. And then once their Shakeology comes in, there's your snack or they replace one of these meals with that. Yeah. That's where I was struggling. Cause it was, if I wanted to start the next week, they wouldn't have had enough time by the end of the five days. Once they've seen the results to buy into that. So I think in the future, if I do another one and there's somebody that's participated before, then I'll require that they be on Shakeology, whether they're already an HD customer or a new customer, whatever. I think I would make that a requirement for a second timer. You know yeah, what I, I mean? What, I think we're going to do a 14 day, like, okay, five days been great. Let's go two weeks and it's going to be 20 bucks. And this is what's all included. And I'm like 20 bucks for two weeks. I mean, that's, you know, 20 bucks is that's, it's been more than that's that a happy hour. If I were to go to happy, yeah. which you all know that I don't. <laughs> no Never happy. The cruise. I'm on this right now. Y'all hold me to it. Since I came back from snowboarding, we're 10 days in. No booze till the cruise. Then nice. on the cruise, nice. yeah. And the cruise, like if you catch a oh. drink in my hand. <laughs> like, um, uh, so let's go through here. Where is, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. That's very helpful. Dr. Jamil, what's up, my Yay. friend? Hey, how are you? Good. How are things, man? Talk to us. Things are okay. They, you know, um, as you noticed, the uh, last couple of months, uh, my my momentum has just gone down a little bit. Um, partly because I think 
uh, I've been busy in the hospital mostly. I've been doing a lot of calls. It's been very busy for me, a uh, lot of sick people. And uh, the other thing, it's this time of the year that probably people are just, and this summer or summer, everyone wants, wants to go out, everyone wants to look good. And right. I, maybe this is my reason behind it. <laughs> I might be wrong. Um, the issue that I'm probably uh, noticing is when I first started last, when I got my success club in, in the summer, I had a lot of conversions. When I talk to people, they all listen and they say, yes, we want it, we want in, we want in. Now, over the last several months, I've been noticing a lot of people just hesitating, just backing up, uh, procrastinating, and I'm not used to that. Right. <laughs> so I'm trying to get my ego out of it if I can, and uh, that's that's not easy for me because if you understand what my what, what I do in my profession, patients come to me, I take care of them, patients leave. I don't have to deal with trying to convince anyone anything. It's right. It's just me doing what to do so this is a little bit outside my scope and i'm trying to get into my outside my comfort zone here and it's not that easy when i get people procrastinating and telling me excuses that i don't even want to hear about because and it makes me a little bit i try to become their their you know try to understand where they're coming from but sometimes it's just a little bit too much for me so my follow-ups might not be as as um kind as i should I, I would want them to be right let's put it this way so this is where i'm where i'm having my problems right now a lot of people are just procrastinating they they have there's the money objection there's the time objection there's this objection that objection and i keep showing people you know what i'm busy as can be i'm posting i'm doing all the things i'm doing all you know the things that need to be done if i can do it why can't anyone else do it it's not that hard right and so, you know, I'm a little bit frustrated, but I, I have to get over myself. Right. You know, yeah, because you, yeah. you got the ultimate time objection, like Trump. You're like, I do this, and have you seen my schedule, you know? Um, so that's good. And, you know, it, it's also, and I, and I remind my coaches of this that go through basics groups. I say, look, there's going to be the majority of you all going to do the same steps in here. And there's going to be somebody in this group that's going to have success faster than somebody else. And I think we've used this analogy in here that sometimes if we say we're all going to find, you know, 50 rock stars in the next year or whatever, let's, let, you know, let's, let's dream big here. And that might mean that you find 25 of those in the first two months. That just means your dry spell comes a little later. And then the, the, the only thing I always, I always tell, I love when coaches like come out of the box, like firing but I also warn them, I'm like, look, there's going to be months that are frustrating. I want to know that you're willing to fight through those as well, you know, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it happens to everybody. Um, I have yet to be a success club all-star because there's one random month every year that I don't make success club. And I don't know why. I mean, I make success club just falling off the bed most of the time. And there's always been one. So, you know you know, you, you know how to be successful at this because you have the track record of it, you know, and, and it's just a, mem it's just a, it's a matter of going back and sometimes looking at the details. Is there something, is there some small thing of how I responded? Maybe it is a little more bedside manner with your responses. Cause I get the same, I, I had to go back and apologize to a buddy of mine who's been dragging his feet to sign up as a coach. He's in, but then he's like, oh, I need to save some money. I'm like, well, you can upgrade for a coach for free. Okay. I've sent him like the steps four times. He's like, oh, I don't have time for this. And I'm like, dude, I'm not asking you to do anything. I like, I ripped him one. And then later that night, I'm like, sorry for the harsh thing. I was like, I was in a busy day yesterday. And I came back and, you know, Craig Holiday always used to tell me, well, he, one thing he really challenged me to do is he said, Jimmy, he goes, if this is the line of really kind of pissing somebody off, he said, you lead from back here. You're so concerned about being liked. And he goes, I understand. And I think mine's just growing up heavy kid. Like I want to be liked. He said, until you learn to lead from about right here, he said, that's your next level. He goes, because every once in a while, you're going to touch that line and you're going to make, you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. He said, but you always have the opportunity to, to apologize. Say, look, I, I crossed a line. It's on me. The only reason I went that far is because you told me you wanted X, whatever. And I want this so badly for you, but I can't want this more than you do. And once I knew, hey, it's okay to, to lead from here because I can always apologize and come back around with kick gloves and re-clarify or whatever. 
it, it's been a, it's been really uh, a, I think a key for me in in leadership growth. I understand. One more confession, though. I need sure. to. I want to see how many of you here. The bat. The bat is my like my big elephant in the <laughs> in, in, in in the in room. I just I the bat is there. All I rely on my Facebook Messenger, my text messages, my my address book, this and that. But I know doing the bat might make my life more consistent. I, everything else in my life is consistent when it comes to beach body, except right. the bat. I like. Do you like the new I bat any to, more than the old bat? How's that? Sorry. Have you looked at the, the new one? Do you like the new simplified one more? I mean, I looked at it and I find it okay. It's, I think it's just, I'm not used to writing things down. I, I'm always on my phone. My phone's always next to me. I, I, have, I have everything there in it, all my address books. But I think doing the bat, I just want to know how many of you are doing the bat consistently every week. I know we teach it in our coach basics. I've been here and I've been there. I just want to know how many of you do actually use it instead of just going to your Facebook messenger or going to your text messaging or going to, uh, and so I can go through that flow, maybe get a little bit more consistency through it because I'm, I'm finding myself searching for people left and right, catching up. And I, I don't have the time for that because you know, I'm doing this in between patients. Right. So, I, I, I'll be really honest with you. I keep my list of my people that I'm interacting with on my phone. I'm not a huge bat guy. Um, but I feel like the things that I keep on my phone correlate with what's on the bat. You know what I'm saying? Like it's who's in my pipeline, who have I reached out to, what were my posts this week? Um, so I, I know I could track things better than I do, but I'm the same way. I'm so phone heavy that I just use either the notes section or awesome note or whatever I'm going to do with reminders. Um, to, to track things. And so that, that's for me, there is a guy and you know what, and I'm going to, I'll have to follow up with this. Uh, Ryan Chapman, one of the guys that was on my snowboard trip, he either made or had somebody commission out. They made an app that basically it's your activity tracker. Why beach buddy couldn't make it. I mean, I was like props to you for not waiting for corporate to make something. It literally shows follow-up dates. I'll, I'll follow up with him and find out if, if it's, if it's public, like if it's for use for everybody. Um, because it was awesome. Like every, every person you had had its own section when you've talked to them, if they got in, did they get in with a, with a challenge pack, when any success club points it was. And then once it's done, it like, it filters itself out of like your main list. It was pretty awesome. I was like, I would use that the same way I use my fitness pal every day to log my food. You know, I would use that. So, um, but no, I, I, on the true, true confession, I don't print out a BAT every week. I don't know about everybody else. For some people, I think it's great. It, there's probably other people that it works really well. Or maybe that's our lesson of all of us. If everybody needs recruiting numbers up is that we all suck at that and we all need to get better. I, I want to interject on Jamil. Um, another thing I think that might be the mindset of, of Jamil not doing the bat other than, yeah, I, I'm bad about it and other people I'm sure, but Jamil, keep in mind, you've also been in shape a long time. So I don't know how often you do the fitness tracking for yourself because you're, you're already in shape. So you just make it a way of life. So I, I think the best way to get in the bat mindset is to put it in the same mindset as tracking your fitness and stuff. So since you don't always probably do that and you're not, you know, getting on the scale all the time and measuring all the time, that may be why you're having the same trouble with the bat. So it may be easier mindset for those people who are dedicated to always doing the, the fitness measuring to do that kind of measuring. So that may be why some people are better at it than others. I agree. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. I got it. I have five minutes to touch base with two Cajuns. Oh my gosh. Hold on. And I don't see Brandy right now. So we're going to Adrian. Ah, oh, see Brandy was late. Okay. Adrian, you get to go first. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. <laughs> oh my God. I'm a hot mess over here. Running kids around. Um, you have a litter of children. Oh, no, 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 no ma'am. Okay. Um, here is the deal with me. I need to recruit. We know that I'm still doing smart success. It's, slow progress because I have a million billion things going on and I drive a lot so it's you know I know we talked about doing it but there's time that I, I'm trying to get on the phone and you know call patients or calling prescriptions or whatever I have to do 
and I, I can't always listen consistently. So it's difficult for me to do that in the car. But I do do the car smart. Um, I am such a slow recruiter. I don't know what my problem is. Um, and y'all have shared some really good tips that I'm going to try. Uh, I just, I mean, I have some people waiting in the wings that are like, yeah. I mean, one girl told me last week that I had coffee with that she definitely wants to do it. And this girl is a marketer for in her profession. And she said, God, this is something I can believe in. This is something that I could, you know, get out there and rock with. But um, she's a single mom. She's concerned about finances. I was like, I can show you how to do it. Don't worry about finances because within the first week, I can teach you how to make your money back. You know, talk to her about challenge groups and all that, but she's still extremely hesitant. So I, I haven't done my job, I guess, as well as, you know, trying to get her to understand that I can help her make the money back. Right. Um, and that's another thing. I did have that back one. And use, you can go back and use stories like that spree. I don't know how many of you caught it that we did a kind of an impromptu. Me and Dave Ward did an impromptu spree cast on Sunday morning and brought Morgan Kay on and talked about her making a thousand bucks her first month. Right. Uh, that's when I, that's when I go back and share with stories like, Oh my gosh, I thought of you today because there's a girl on our team going through the training. I was just telling you about, she made a grand last month. I know this would be exactly the same thing. You know, I'm excited about you getting started. It's not necessarily a hard sell. It's just like, oh, man, I thought of you, you know, and it's an encouraging point. Yeah. Somebody's going to go a thousand bucks. Okay, let's go. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. So um, that's the big thing right now, just still focusing on smart success, trying to be a little bit more organized. Um, Brandy and I have some groups going. We did um, the clean eating group. This is my second time actually doing the clean eating one. The first time I did it, I had some people buy the sample packs um, for the progression. But then when it came to the 21-day workout group, I think I might have only had like one person um, that – that did well. So hoping for something this time, 21 day fix seems to be super hot, you know, hoping, hoping that that's going to help right now. I only have two success points, but, um, really looking to get some coach conversions. Um, you know, we talked about our coaches, you know, and, and y'all Wade was talking about his coaches and I kind of have the same thing. I have some good steady coaches that are just, you know, basically discount coaches and that's fine, but they give me fantastic volume. Yeah. You know, they recommend things and they give me really good, I have really good volume. Yeah. So I, I, I try not to complain about that. I'm still working. My, my main goal before March is to get Don to Diamond. So push me, remind me, Brandy's on my butt, Jimmy's on my butt, you know, um, and I need that from y'all just to, so that I can buckle down and get things done. And you, you can know, be the same because you're, I mean, you're one of the most non BS, like, bold chicks I know and so you can bring that to your business you know with no nonsense when you're when you're talking to people just the flat tax even if it's like look here's my paycheck like you know like I know that you you have the no bs talk down so when you're talking to your people again just be you don't think oh, what's the perfect thing to say you be you and, and yeah are really drawn to that too so I, I think that that's um I think that that's great you know and and yeah if you got coaches making volume I was talking to uh I was talking to somebody the other day who was, I forget who it was. They're in the millionaires club, but I outrank them. Right. And they're like, why can't I get to your rank? I'm like, sweet pea, I will change my rank for your volume. Because at the end of the day, that volume is what's coming through check wise. Right. Um, like we all have rank goals and rank and volume come together in sometimes, but yeah, if those coaches are cool, you just keep bringing in the new ones. Um, and you kind of have the same situation Jamil does. People trust you because you have an expertise in, you know, say that Brandy, like you, when you have a medical expertise in that, uh, people respect your, your opinion. So I, I think you're in a good spot. Awesome. Cool, I cool. feel pretty good about it, even though I'm slow motion. I feel slow motion sometimes. Hey, hey you, keep, you just keep showing up, girl. You got this. All right. I'm going to unmute the Martins at the same time because that's romantic. Yay! Cajun, num Cajun number two and redneck number one. Yeah. So uh, how are things going there, Holmes? Holmes, we're doing good. We are uh, really trying to push um, 21 Day Fix, and we've got some, some of our quirkiness planned um, for this week to promote it with some pictures. Um, yeah, my wife's a genius, so I'll put it out there. She kind of started we'll see, the idea. We'll see if it pays off, but uh, we, yesterday we did we a kicked 20 it around. so easy a caveman yeah. can do it. And, nice. Um, 
Today we're promoting the Duck that Dynasty. The first one. Cause... Since it's huh? opening, uh, opening of the season, the Duck Dynasty. Well, uh, excuse me, Swamp Season. Nice. Swamp yeah. Duck Dynasty. Wow. Tonight, so. Okay. But uh, we're doing yeah. good. We're trying to do hashtags um, like the Martins because a lot of people refer to us now as the Martins. Right. Um, I think biggest thing for us, and I think Brian would probably agree, is just the whole time management thing. And we try to set a schedule and yeah, we do good with it for a few days. And then it just kind of goes, um, gets put aside again. So I, I don't know. Hey, I was going to ask you, because that's kind of come up, but I haven't really got to talk to you guys about it. Is that something where, is it, is it a matter of, like, evenings when y'all get home from work, y'all are just, it's, obviously, y'all have very demanding jobs, and you want to spend time together, but is there is there a way to do, you know, quality married time, chill out time, but then there's also, since you're both in this 100% together, right, which is really rare right. for uh, for a spouse duo, is there is there times that it's it's concentrated we're working business together either that's both of you separately with laptops or doing something because sometimes kelly and i'll be like we'll knock things out together right like she'll go through emails and we'll do stuff together. and sometimes it's you sit there i'm gonna sit here for the next hour we're killing this thing and it's it's scheduled right because we know hey we just have an hour left of the babysitter or we just have whatever. Is that something you guys try to, cause I just keep thinking, I mean, obviously you get your workouts in early. Y'all doing a great job there, but right. what, what's, is, is there, are there other things I'm not, I'm not privy of on, on what comes up in the evenings? Well, it's, you know, and that's maybe that's something that her and I both, we have to stop and say, you know, is <laughs> when we get in, we say, okay, this is it for this amount of time. We're going to bam, 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 bam. And we're going to knock out these things, put you know, right. get our list together, do it. Uh, maybe stop and eat and then, but we don't, we don't have a tremendous amount of time in the evening. So we, we do, I, I think that's our problem. Our biggest problem is concentrating, um, is concentrating that time in right. the evening, you know, it, 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 now and then we have a little time during the day. So we kind of are able to piece a little bit here and there, but I think the bulk of what we need to get done, uh, really can happen in the evenings. We just got to sit down and schedule it and say okay this is what we're gonna do and i think of it this way obviously i'm not telling you guys how to run your marriage because that's y'all's business but i look no, at no, no. is is also it's gonna all if you had that schedule time in the evening it frees up you trying to have a split focus at work right so just allow because sometimes right, that's exhausting, right. right you're trying to run your business and your job at the same time just mm -hmm. mentally and training so when you get home you don't want to deal with it yep. because you've been trying to follow up people on your phone all day so if you really would reserve right. it to the end I don't know if it's a conversation because I go back to like, and I'm not asking you to do this, but I go back to like that video Scotty Hobbs made about what he sacrificed for a short amount of time and that y'all make some mm -hmm. kind of pack together that, okay, look, if we will give this hour or this hour and a half or this two hours in the evening or whatever you guys agree on for the next three months, you know, th is that worth sacrificing whatever to building this to where Maybe one of us can come home for a job or split somebody's hours in half, but you know, okay, we're going to make, we'll make a pact. We're going to put a beginning and an end date to it. That way we know this isn't forever. And we have, you create some urgency to it too. Okay. We got 60 days. Right. We're going to do, you know, from six to whatever, whatever you guys thing is it's after dinner. Maybe it's eight to 10 or I don't know. That's something you guys do, but to kind of make that pact together because I know you guys' dreams. I know your goals. And I also know that you guys are such a dynamic, amazing couple that you got everything you need to kill this thing. I think it just comes down to here are those office hours. We're in this thing for real and, and just right. do that for, for a consistent short amount of time. Right. I, I think that is a, a big thing in, in, that we both need to do. Um, and we talked about it. We've talked about it. We continue to talk about it. I think it's something that, and I think Brandon agree with me that we just say, we know, you know what we're going to say, this is what we're going to do. This is what our goal is. This is what we're willing to do. Put it down and say, this is it. This is what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And it's just forcing ourselves to sit down and well, putting it down and making it happen. And, and I know this as um, well. It's, it's the same reason Kelly and I don't make really good, um, success partners when it comes to our food or workouts because you're willing to let the person you love the most slip if you know they've had a long day 
right? It's so easy to be like, sweetheart, don't go do that workout. Today was rough because this and this and this come up. And like, you make excuses for it. Like you let each other slide because you see that your, you know, your significant other is, man, they just had a really hell day or a really shitty day. And you're like, okay, you know, we're a six, you know, if somebody that success partner of mine that doesn't live in my house is going to go, I don't care. You said this, you know? And so sometimes as, as spouses, sometimes we give each other too much leniency because you don't want to see your, your partner like suffer or tired or whatever. So just my yeah, thoughts. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but I know. No, yeah, that, it makes perfect sense. And you guys are so creative with what you guys come up with. And so I, I think it's just a matter of just having that concentrated time. And maybe, maybe you're not quite as, I mean, I, I can't even put myself in, into y'all's, your shoes with your jobs, but I do know I'm more tired at the end of the day when I'm trying to do three things at once, just mentally. I'm like, I'm done when I get home. And so maybe if you're willing yeah. to let go of some business stuff at work, that way when you get home, you, you're excited to get to your beach body stuff instead of, God, I wish work wouldn't do this because I'm trying to answer that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then it all just becomes just pain. You're like, dude, where's the, like break up in another bottle of wine and turn on the TV because I am done, you know, like, <laughs> Um, cause I've, I've been there. I know that. And so. that's my struggle when I get in in the evening. Yeah. It's just, you know, I'm saying, I just want five minutes and that five minutes turns into 15 and may turn into 20 and it's right. like, okay, I got to get up and I got to, right. and then I'm staying up late than I should, but I get the word done. So I miss my sleep. Right. <laughs> Four or five hours to miss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, cool. Well, y'all keep it up. And I, 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 I'm anxious to look at the rest of y'all's posts in this creative, fun little thing. And guys, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, specifically, all the women on here, if y'all aren't taking advantage of 21 Day Fix, because, like, I think it's a great program across the board, mm. but chicks are yeah. dominating this thing, right? It's like every woman, mom, wife's, like, <laughs> fantasy dream program. And totally take advantage of it. Oh, so, okay. I got to tell, I got to tell Jed a really funny story real quick and y'all can all laugh at me. So, and I meant to text you this, Jed, I had a whole great niche idea. So we went, so we go to Whistler, right? We go to Whistler and we get there and there's rainbow flags everywhere. When we get to, we get to Whistler, right? And we're there literally three days before we get what, and, and everything says gaywhistler.com on everything so it becomes like this big running joke about and i i stopped and mike ryan and i were talking about this and i said no 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 i was like i said i gotta i said i gotta talk to jed and tim i was like that's the greatest niche ever i'm like okay there's gonna be a bunch i was like i'm gonna stay another week and recruit all these fuckers i was like oh sorry kids around recruit all these guys i said because i said look they all want to go travel they all want to look good and lose some weight. They need money to, uh, to like pay for these trips and to pay for the cocktails and all this stuff. And I want to call it the Rainbow Crewalition. <laughs> <laughs> Do you love it? I love it. Love it. Okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> you were just, I hadn't talked to you since then, and I thought everybody would enjoy that story. But because we were talking about niches, you know, and I kept talk, we kept talking about – how these women dominate beach body. And I'm like, cause I said challenge groups are way more female friendly because it's social and we get to check in every day and take my sweaty selfie. And I'm like, a lot of dudes aren't into that. I was like, what's other niches we can get into? And then we pull up and there's like gaywhistler.com, like banners and everything everywhere. I was like, I gotta stay another week. But anyway, um, I digress. That was my, that was my, that was my brilliant moment uh, idea coming out of my snowboard trip because um, I didn't snowboard well, so I had to take something positive out of that trip. Um, all right, guys, this thing has gone really long, but I really, I, I hope that you guys all got a lot out of this. I really am excited to see all of your My Story videos posted in the next week. Hint and emic, hint, hint, hinters. Either solo or as a couple. Don't put your squash at me. Um, <laughs> Whoa, what you I don't know what that's about. <laughs> now I know y'all don't get anything done at the evenings. Um, <laughs> all right, now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> all right, guys, I got to go eat, and I'm. Uh,
Yeah. I, I posted my question on the, on the uh, diamond group for the post for everybody to help me. With, oh so. yeah. Yeah. Go to the diamond group. Let's help. Let's help John turn this no into a yes. And uh, y'all keep kicking ass and uh, let's keep each other. Let's, let's hold each other to this. Let's recruit, recruit, recruit. You guys got it in you. I'll talk to you later. Love you. Thanks everybody. Bye.